Friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I want to welcome you to this online service of worship for Riverside United Church, an affirming community of faith in London, Ontario, for October 31st, 2021. My name is Dave Exley, and I'm the lead minister for Riverside. This is, if you're watching this on the day of its release, the day before All Saints Day, also known as Halloween. And so as we think of those saints, as we ponder those leaning into this next month that we're heading into, the 1st of November, we give thanks for that great cloud of witnesses that will help guide us deeper into our walk with God and with one another. We begin a new sermon series today, More Than Enough, living with a sense of abundance, not scarcity. In today's service, we'll be looking at an encounter that Jesus had with a religious leader who asked him an important question. What commandment is the greatest? Jesus' answer provides for us a glimpse of what God values above all else. It is an answer that can transform our living as we attempt to embrace the abundant life that God has in store for us. And so, friends, let us open our hearts to God's great love as we begin our service today in song.
A reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verses 28 to 34, reading from the Common English Bible Translation. One of the legal experts heard their dispute and saw how well Jesus answered them. He came over and asked him, Which commandment is the most important of all? And Jesus replied, The most important one is Israel. Listen, our God is the one Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You will love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. The legal expert said to him, Well said, teacher. You have truthfully said that God is one, and there is no other besides him. And to love God with all of our heart, a full understanding, and all of one's strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, is much more important than all kinds of entirely burned offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered with wisdom, he said to him, You aren't far from God's kingdom. After that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Well, one of the major themes in the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament is the theme of abundance versus scarcity. In a world where humankind operates out of a sense of scarcity, God, that divine voice, is continually reminding the people that there is enough. In fact, the whole biblical narrative seems to paint the picture of a God speaking words of comfort to the people helping them to see and embrace the abundant gifts of this life. The people hear those words, they embrace them for a time, but eventually they find themselves back in a place driven by scarcity and fear. Think of the story of God providing manna, bread from heaven, for the Israelites in the wilderness. Each day they had just enough. Whenever they tried to save some, store it up out of a sense of fear for tomorrow, the food was no good the next day. In the New Testament, we read stories of Jesus feeding the masses on numerous occasions, and in each and every case, those around him seem to operate out of a sense of scarcity. The disciples say, surely we can't possibly provide for a crowd of this size. Or these few fish and loaves of bread aren't going to be enough for all these people. And each time they doubt, they are surprised to find that there is indeed enough. In our new four-week sermon series that begins today, More Than Enough, Living with a Sense of Abundance, Not Scarcity, we will focus on this theme of abundance. In a world where we always seem to be be pulled in the other direction toward fear and scarcity, the question at the heart of this is how might we live into this promise of God's abundance, a world where there is enough for all? And so, as we prepare to tune into that voice of abundance, let us pray. O creative God, Source of all beauty, you give light to the soul. Open our hearts as we listen for your word. Open our minds as we dream with you. Reveal your life-giving truth that comforts and disturbs us through Jesus the Christ. Amen. What if you could ask God anything? Imagine facing the Creator and being able to pose just one question. I suspect if given the chance, most of us would ask God about the true meaning of life. We'd ask God how we should live our daily lives. Perhaps we'd keep it simple and say to God, God, if you could summarize the true purpose of life, perhaps in the form of a tweet in 200 characters or less, what would you say? Of all the questions we could ask the Maker, this seems to be the most pressing one for humankind. 
And so when we hear the exchange that takes place between Jesus and the legal expert in Mark chapter 12, we can't help but lean in a little closer to hear the answer that Jesus gives. For the question that the scholar asks, which commandment is the most important of all, is essentially the question we all long to have answered. What is the most important instruction when it comes to our living? The answer Jesus gives is one that, for many of us, is is written on our hearts. We may not have long sections of Scripture committed to memory, but we do know the answer to this question. Love God. Love neighbor. Love self. On the surface, it appears to be so simple. In fact, so simple that preachers might find it difficult to speak on the subject. What more could be said about this that hasn't already been said? But the more we look closely at Jesus' answer and consider the implications, the more we begin to realize that though the concept is simple, following these instructions is far from easy. Our world of fear and scarcity doesn't just uh, pull us toward a place where we fail to see God's abundant table where all are nourished, where all are fed. It also prevents us from operating out of a sense of abundance as it relates to things like grace and love. At the heart of Jesus' response is one word, love. Love God. Love neighbor. Love self. These are challenging instructions when we consider what our faith tradition says to us about love. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the church in Corinth, offers us the most helpful written description of love as he reminds us in that letter that love is patient, love is kind, it isn't jealous. It isn't arrogant. It doesn't seek its own advantage. It doesn't keep a record of complaints. Love puts up with all things, trusts in all things, hopes for all things, endures all things. In other words, love is hard. Love takes practice. Love stretches us and invites us to move beyond where we are today. It isn't a feeling, it's a way of living. One might think that the world is wired for love, but our fears so often drive us in the other direction. We don't intentionally turn away from this way of living. We simply neglect to remember what it means to love God, to love our neighbor, and to love ourselves. Like the wandering Israelites and the confused disciples of Jesus, we feel the pull towards that place of fear and scarcity, and it leads us away from the path that God invites us to take with our living. In fact, just a few days ago, the curtain was pulled back on something that revealed a dark truth related to our world. The Washington Post and a number of other news outlets revealed a dirty little secret associated with one of the algorithms that Facebook, that social media giant, has been using for years on their social media platform. Four years ago, when faced with a concerning trend related to engagement on Facebook, people were posting less than they they had in the past. Facebook introduced five new ways to interact with their individual posts. Rather than simply being able to just like a post, users were now able to react in other ways. In addition to the thumbs up, liking a post, Facebook added the ability to love a post, to laugh at a post, to say wow, to express sadness, as well as react with an emoji expressing anger. The concept seemed harmless enough, perhaps even helpful. But what the company kept from its users is the algorithm they created to elevate and prioritize certain posts over others based on these reactions was one that is troubling. The hidden formula 
gave five points for each angry reaction and only one point for a like or a thumbs up. In other words, posts where individuals responded with the anger emoji were much more likely to appear in a user's feed when they logged onto the platform each and every day. As the Washington Post reported, for three years, Facebook systematically amped up some of the worst of its platform, making it more prominent in users' feeds and spreading it to a much wider audience. Why did they do this? Why did they decide to place additional value on posts that evoke anger? It's quite simple. Facebook realized that anger sells. Anger helps them to generate higher profit margins. So why bother with the others? In fact, in her testimony before the British Parliament last week, Facebook whistleblower Francis Hagen said anger and hate is the easiest way to grow on Facebook. It's no wonder that hate appears to be on the rise in our world. The odds are quite literally stacked against love. To live a life of love, one must come to grips with the fact that our world and our inner nature itself tends to move us in the opposite direction. Despite what the world might tell us, love might be the least contagious thing in the world. Look no further than the ending of this passage from Mark's Gospel. After Jesus tells the legal expert that God values love above all else, how does the crowd around Jesus respond? The text says, After that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. Put into today's language, it's like they all collectively decided to press the mute button on Jesus' social media account. Thankfully, Thankfully, our God is not a God who longs to stir up emotions of anger and fear for selfish reasons. God isn't a God who hides behind a curtain manipulating us from the shadows. Instead, God is the one who speaks to us plainly and invites us to share equally in the gifts of all creation. Through the life and teachings of Jesus, we're reminded that God's realm isn't based on some trumped-up algorithm or point system that is designed to manipulate and control the masses or, or to make money. God's hopes and dreams for the world aren't hidden behind closed doors, kept in secret only to be shared with a handful of privileged individuals. Instead, God's plan is there for us all to see in plain view. Love. Now that's not to say that God wants to limit our emotions and responses in this life. God welcomes both our righteous anger as well as our feelings of joy and happiness. God simply wants to knock down barriers in our world in order that love and grace might flow more abundantly to all corners of creation, to all people regardless of time and space. While our world is busy designing algorithm, algorithms to increase corporate profits and enrich the top 1%, God is busy giving away love like there is no tomorrow risking it all for the sake of love. Think of it this way. Our world has its limits. Today, when many of us load up our Halloween baskets to share with the kids in the neighborhood, there will be a time when the candy will run out. Whether that's due to us or due to the trick-or-treaters will be up to each one of us. There'll be a time where nothing is left in the basket Love works on a completely different level. We need not limit the love we share because there is always something more left in the basket. God will give us more and more. More love, more grace, more forgiveness, more mercy, more joy. 
If we dig deep, we will discover that there is this endless supply of those things planted within each and every one of us. We need not ration God's gifts or save them for a rainy day. There is always more than enough. As we attempt to tap into God's deep well of love, let me close with this, this prayer written by Ted Loder. And may it invite us into a deeper sense of God's abundance for the world as we long to see as God sees, as we long to love as God loves. Praise be to you, O Lord, for life and for my intense desire to live. Praise be to you for the mystery of love and for my intense desire to be a lover. Praise be to you for this day and another chance to live and love. Thank you, God, for those who attempt beauty rather than curse ugliness. For those who take stands rather than take pulls. For those who risk being right rather than pandering to be liked. For those who do something rather than talking about everything. Lord, grant me grace, then, and a portion of your spirit, that I may so live as to give others cause to be thankful for me, thankful because I have not forgotten how to hope, how to laugh, how to say I'm sorry, how to forgive, how to bind up wounds, how to dream, how to cry, how to pray, how to love when it is hard, and how to dare when it is dangerous. Undam me, O oh God, that praise may flow more easily from me than wants, thanks more readily than complaints. Praise be to you, O oh God, for life. Praise be to you for another chance to live. Amen. Cause there is always more where this comes from, gifts come from the never any source, never any source. This river never runs dry. Divine abundance is why we can share our gifts and our love because there's more than enough. Sometimes all we can see is scarcity. Multiplies our gifts again and again and again and again. Don't be afraid to share, cause there is always more where this comes from. Gifts come from a never ending source, never ending source. This river never runs dry. Divine abundance is why. We can share our gifts and our love Because there's more than enough There is more than enough There is more than enough Friends, may the God of love guide you to that place of abundance today and in the days ahead. And may you come to realize that in this life, we have more than enough. Go out into the world and love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor. Love yourself. 
And may God grant you peace and joy. May Christ set you free for that deep and abiding love. And may the Holy Spirit go where you go and protect you on your way. Go in peace. Amen.